So on this edition of BS and with Bubba, we have today uh, Brandon Ernest with Ernest Performance, a longtime friend of of, of mine, and um, excited to have him on. This is the second second show, and um, you know the first show I thought was very um, kind of you know who's the all time great racer. And, it's uh, Rich Bickle. <laughs> Number two is Jeff there Purvis. There we go. There we go. So my pick is always uh, Jeff Purvis, but um, there's not many people that's won the World 100 and the Snowball Derby. Snowball Derby. actually won. So one. There's only Jeff one Purvis. guy. That's it. He's the only guy. So, um, you know, uh, this episode, I wanted to talk to someone that, that's been close to me uh, for for. 10 years now, I guess, right? Yeah, right about um, it. I think somewhere around 2013 or 14, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, and, and one reason I wanted you to have you on there is because with when you're BSing with Bubba, you're, uh, you're telling it like it is. And that's what I've always respected about you is yeah, you tell it like it is, even if it's me and things I don't want to hear. And that's usually about every day um, when I make some bad decisions and things like that. So uh, not only racing, but in, in, in other life um, – aspects of life so uh yeah um you know just for the people who don't know you um tell us a little bit about you and where you started i know you're from arkansas long yep. damn ways from uh, north carolina about 13 hours actually what's uh what really sucks about going home to arkansas is when you leave here you drive about 30 minutes north to i-40 and then you drive about 12 hours on i-40 <laughs> and then you get about 30 minutes that south sounds like going I down i-10 yes, from uh, new terrible. smyrna to pensacola yeah, it's terrible. Um, I, I grew up in Arkansas. I was born and born and raised in Pine Bluff, which is about thirty miles south of Little Rock. Um, just kind of grew up with my uncles, dirt racing, street stocks, and whatnot. Uh, a couple local tracks there, none of which are there anymore. Um, and then I ended up kind of getting into the dirt late model stuff. Did that for three or four years, five years, whatever it was, um, as 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 a, a, a job career, right? And then moved here. So was your uh, family around racing before that? So my my uncles, uncles, one primarily, Jimbo, who's kind of, you know, he kind of was the main uh, male adult figure in my life growing up as far as racing goes. Um, he actually just sold his stuff about two years ago. His racing stuff? Yes. Oh. So he, he's fresh out of it, and now he fishes all the time, so he's probably Nothing having with that. a little bit more fun, maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit cheaper. He says not so much, but... He says anybody that thinks fishing is cheaper has never been to the bait shop with him, but, well, but you know. Um, but anyway, so grew up with him, and uh, he always raced, and, um, you know, we always watched it on TV, of course, and like everybody else did, and um, ended up, you know, like I said, working in Dirt Lake Model World for a few years, and then ended up moving here, I think, in 04, 04, 05, um, truck racing, cup racing, bush racing, Ended up working for shock manufacturer, and then ended up going out on my own, and that's how we ended up here. And so we've been doing this probably since about the time that we've been friends, because I think we kind of started right about the same time. Yeah. So you really, honestly, um, kind of the way you got your start is a lot of the same uh, ways that a lot of people did. Kind of living. I don't know if necessarily your dream, but. Um, Kind of how you got started. You just old school backwards racing and, and then moved to North Carolina like you're supposed to, which a lot of guys do nowadays. Yeah, and, and I think that was more so, um, I think I was maybe kind of the last generation of the, you know, the the guy that, that grew up at the dirt track and or, or short track, I should say. And um, nowadays it seems like it's a lot more engineer based and, you know, a lot more kids coming out of school going into it versus, you know, the, the kids that grew up racing. Um, there's a bunch of them nowadays in cup racing. It, is, it doesn't. It's not bad. It's just different, right? Yeah. Um, well, there, and there, really another thing is there's, there's nothing to do in Arkansas. Well, <laughs> there's there is that you can get in a lot of damn trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you got to find a way out, and yeah. that's me for me. You. Racing was that, right? You usually find so, me way for me to get in trouble. I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Arkansas is pretty rough. It's not. Uh, it's 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 a good place to be from and not still be at. Put yeah. it that way. Yeah, so, um, you know, I guess what would you say, 2010, 12? That, I remember, man, I remember this guy calling me. I, I don't know, I can't, I look back, I think it was, you were building shops for Daniel Henry. It was probably, what, in a short track race, probably your first customer? I mean, well, not necessarily, but. 
down south, yes. Yeah. So we were um, we were doing a lot of stuff in the Midwest with uh, Fredrickson and Chris Wimmer, Travis Sauter, those guys. But I mean, out of the Midwest tour, like we were doing nothing, right? Mm-hmm. And so we ended up getting hooked up with Hemrick, um, and that's when he was driving. That's when he was driving um, Carswell '98. Yep. Oh, was it, it was not before that? It was Carswell '98, okay. and he was first also year of the Southern Super Series for. Uh, I believe it was actually the year before. It was a Jack Lance car. Yes. Who was um? My it mom was went blank. Carswell '98, and he also drove a pass car for I can't remember the feller's name. Yeah. Um. So he kind of had two different cars, and then you know Legends, which we obviously didn't do anything with that, but he raced yeah. a bunch of Legends car stuff back then. And yeah, I mean, I remember. It's funny how you remember certain things about certain th- certain times. Man, I remember riding down the road and you calling me, and I was like, "Who is this guy?" You know, I don't even remember what, who was shock I was using at the time or anything. And I was like, "Golly, here's here's another one of these guys that wants you to try something." He's right, like, yeah. yeah that's and, me. and I think for the longest time, I think that was right after I got a, I started, um, I stopped driving for Ronnie, and I went back to my own personal car. I think, and. Um, I was like, man, this guy's calling me again, and and I think you called me there for a while, and and I was like, oh, I'm just I'm okay where I'm at, and next thing you know, I'll I'll, I'll send you some just try, and then the rest is history after that. So I guess you uh, sent me a good set that first time, I guess. Well, it actually went down a little bit different than that, the way I remember it. But um, so I I did call you a few times, and you didn't answer the phone. That's that's accurate. <laughs> so like you didn't say nothing because yeah. you didn't answer the phone, right? Yeah. But the same thing happened with Hemrick when I started calling him too. Um, but yeah, so we ended up we were some we were in Nashville for a race, and you and Aaron were there. I'm pretty sure y'all were not married yet. Yeah, I, I think guess I, I think that's when I first met her. It may have been. Yeah, and um, I bought you guys like a six pack of beer at the bar yeah. and just dropped it off on your table. And yeah. I'm like, just just call me already, you know? Yeah. So then, so anyway, so after this I whole couldn't situation, imagine, I couldn't imagine you behind me a six pack of beer, <laughs> or, or only wife. a six pack, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, but uh, but anyway, so after that, we ended up um, going and uh, we ended up going to Pensacola to test. That's right. Yep, I do remember that. And this is like uh, the longest walk in the history of my life, right? So Bubba gets out and he unloads his car, and he was really on top of it at the time, right? And he goes out and he makes a run and he comes in and he's like, got his chest poked out. He's oh, like, oh, come she's on now. as good as she always <laughs> is, you know? Uh, and I'm like, well, at five here we go. it's okay to do that. Oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. Because back then it was me, Augie, and Chase. We that's were, right. We were, it, between us three, we were winning some races. Yeah, and that's right. That's exactly some, right. Show. So anyway, so we put these shocks on and you go out and you make like half a lap and you come back in and I'm standing I down I still the only run a half a lap to this day. <laughs> and I had to walk all the way back. Only make it like we didn't even make a full lap and I'm like, "Oh, this is not good." <laughs> yeah. And I get back and he says, "I've never he said I've never had that. so much front end grip it caught me off guard and I had to figure out what to do." Yeah. He's like, "I got to think about it for I a minute." I had to pull in and regroup. That was the first day. Yeah. Had to pull in and regroup and kind of was like, "Good lord." Yeah, I do remember that. And I'd say I don't know, probably been together for about 97.9% of the time since then. Yeah, it's been a lot. The only the only time we've done anything different is when I've driven for other people. Well, yeah. kind of done a few other different things that I, I kind of, but we talked about. Very minimal. Yep, very little. So, But it's been great. That's one thing that, you know, and ever since then we've had a relationship. People, we're, we're friends. We put, you know, um... Racing is just a little part of it. It really is it at is. the end of the day. It is. And well, it, it goes back to, and you're a big part of the reason I started traveling racing. Um, because I would have never probably went to California um, if you wouldn't have pushed me there. And then we won that, and we was like, let's go to Washington. I would have never done those things. So as as far as me getting out and, and racing at different places and start traveling, it, I, I feel like a lot of it's because of you, because you gave me that confidence to be able to do it and uh in our program so let's talk about something else you like modifieds man my my modified debut was shortly lived it was i (laughs) forgot about that actually maybe we can get you lined up to do that again yeah i would like to i would like to because i've always been fascinated with them uh just the way they sound and the wide tires they're They're low to ground they're just badass well we have right now the problem with me driving modified Mm -hmm. is i'm too damn big (laughs) (laughs) 
They're tight. Yeah. Oh, they're tight. I was yeah. I was uncomfortable in that one. That well, Ryan. that was also built for priests, so he yeah. was pretty skinny back then, right? Yeah. He's a big boy now. But no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm saying he was he was pretty small. Hey, I'm slimming up a little bit. Yeah, but you weren't then. <laughs> no, I was not. I'm still not. <laughs> that small was now. big Bubba days. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. I would man. They just so badass and like New Smyrna and like oh, New man, Hampshire. It's so like awesome. it's. It's cool. Like Martinsville would be yeah. cool. Next Thursday. Is it next Thursday? Next Thursday. Oh, wow. Championship finale. Championship battle coming down. I think, I want to say Ron Silk and Justin Monsignor have won four or five races each. Hmm. So, I mean, hell, they've won half the races, right? Or yeah. more. Yeah. And they're, I mean, man, they're only a handful of points so apart. So, Matt Hirschman, pretty much when he broke his wrist, he's been done. Like, is he back yet? Well, he doesn't run the tour full time, so he wouldn't be in the. So, what makes anyway. him? Why? Why don't he do that? Why don't he? Because he's. he's it's a good question. He's probably one of the biggest name besides you know all the other guys you name, Ron mm-hmm. Silk and stuff. But I mean, Matt Hirschman's one. Of the, that's like me not going to Winchester, right? Well, so <clears throat> Hirschman does run the tour some. Um, Hirschman runs more of an outlaw schedule. He more chases big money mm-hmm. races. That you know, nicknames big money Matt, but. In modified, like I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. In modified racing, there's a clear pecking order. Yeah. There's the NASCAR wheel and modified tour, which is P1, and then everything else. Oh is, yeah, you're, you're going to crucified. That. For it is that. what it is. Like <laughs> that's the way it's perceived. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that that's real. I'm saying that's the way it's perceived. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of weird how you have like tour teams. Like the the 51 that Justin drives is a tour team. Like they only run tour races. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you got Hirschman who races anything he can possibly race, right? Yeah. So a lot of the reason why he doesn't run the tour full time, I think, is because tour races conflict with big money races. I got you. So like it would it would, you know, interfere. I would like to see him run a tour. Has he has he ever done it? I don't know if he's ever ran it full time. I don't think so. So is is Matt is he a earnest customer? No. Oh. No, he runs bro shots. Oh. Yeah, don't tell nobody that. <clears throat> What about Lay Moss Stock stuff? You gonna do? Well, any more of that? yeah. So, <laughs> well, do you, what, what do you think? Well, I don't think you should. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's another reason I didn't. Well, I, I think I you don't should ask because I know my answer before I even. Well, do it. I, no, I, I, I don't think you should do it for one race or two races. Like correct. I think, that's you know, that's too hard. I think you know that's you should I'm commit to running the full cars deal. Yeah. Right. Well, let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm I'm not impressed. I'm impressed with the fact that, like, Junior, like, it's changed hands. Trackhouse, mm-hmm. uh, Justin Marks, Burton, all those guys. They ain't really come in there and try to change it and make it NASCAR, which I don't know much <clears> because <throat> I'm not – I don't do it every weekend. But they've kind of kept it the same. And I've heard rumors um, that they're on a possibly big TV deal for next year. So I think there's a, a lot of changes big deal. going on behind the scenes. Yep. Um and a great group of owners, right? Yep. Like, I remember, I don't know, a couple years ago or whatever it was, whenever Chip Ganassi got bought out and, you know, Justin Marks was coming in and somebody asked me, he said, what do you think about all this? And I said, well, I can tell you this. I've never seen Justin Marks do something that wasn't successful. Correct. Like, I don't know the guy. And he's I've in never a had a conversation things. with him. He's but everything I've ever seen the guy do is, has been successful, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And it's phenom- It's it's light years better than it was whenever Chip had it yeah. last, right? Like, it's it's a way better team. They win more. They're competitive. Mm. All that. But what I do think is going on behind the scenes is I think there's a lot, there's a, a lot of effort going on from the Cars Tour side to try to consolidate uh, the tire program mm-hmm. with Cars Tour and the weekly racetracks. To where more there's more of it on the same tire, yeah, um, which is the way it should be all I, across the board. They have gone to they have approached NASCAR about rules consolidation and mm-hmm. like some if there's yep. things that can be done that way we don't. You're have not going to win all those conversations, but they're literally proactively yeah. having them, and that's more than most people are doing. Well, that's more than what Super Late Models are doing. A hundred percent agree. Uh, because let's just take the instance of what's been going on at Hickory, those shock. Uh, technicalities and things like that. Yeah. If, South if, Boston. That's South Boston, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if all that would have been on the same page, mm-hmm. none of this would have happened. That's right. You know what I mean? So that's a, I mean, it's a step in the right direction, and I think that's what we got to have. On well, and there was th- that specific thing there at South Boston. Like, I don't know if you really know what happened there, but what happened was the 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 rule changed a few years ago, go from non-adjustable to adjustable, and you had to resubmit your parts, right? To NASCAR. To NASCAR for approval. Well, uh-huh. Bill Stein didn't submit the sha- the shaft diameter. I'm just glad no, he's on Bill Stein. <laughs> the 
the diameter of the shaft was um, the diameter of the shaft was bigger than the non-adjustable one. So oh, they threw them you. out for the diameter of the shaft. Wow! It's like, come on now. It's fourteen millimeter versus twelve millimeter. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. Right. But a rule is a rule. Yeah. So, but it, you know that that goes back to the whole thing of like if the rules are more consolidated, get rid of some of the old rules mm-hmm. too. That nobody had ran Bill Steins for years, and that's why it was never updated because yeah. it was never an issue, yeah. right? And they're coming back in new to the things. They probably didn't know the a hundred percent. Like they nobody did anything wrong. Procedures. Like, it was just yeah. overlooked. And, and, Which I and, guess technically is doing something wrong, but you know what yeah. I'm saying. And you know, getting back to, I mean, late model stock is super competitive. It is, and you that's one thing you're gonna have to do. It's so different than what we do. It's a momentum thing. I mean, the motors they weigh so much, and the motors don't have much horsepower. Um, so it's a momentum thing. You gotta they have sound a sound terrible. It's, oh my god, <laughs> they're the worst selling race car. Yeah, they on sound the terrible. But man, they they do. They and do a good as job. A, as a driver, like, they make you better because you have to be so perfect. You do. You, you can't be off. Discipline and, is everything. Yeah. And and I'm really um, I'm really excited to see where that deal goes. Um, it's possible. I've, I've talked about doing some, you know, late model stock next year and mm-hmm. uh, building a race car. Uh, my mother tells me that she she don't she don't want to buy nothing, <laughs> and she tells me I need to to possibly get a late model stock. She's she likes it. it's closer to home. I mean we're we're getting way out there on some of these Man, super late model races that we, we have are. to go to to race, and they're paying some good money just right here in the Carolinas, which is only about five hours six hours. That's right. When I'm used to traveling twelve to go to race that's so exactly right. It's tough and being gone. I could be gone two days instead of three to four. Right. Now one thing them damn late model stocks do they they do some testing. Man, I'm telling Every you. Every time it's I crazy. get on social media, somebody is testing a Thursday before a Friday practice. Yeah. And then they race there. And I'm That's like, right. holy smokes. These guys do some testing. They stuff. do that, man. I'm telling you. I remember, I guess, so I guess I started, I don't, maybe I started doing late mall socks around 2010, maybe. Um, I'm pretty sure Lee Pulliam won Martinsville in 2011. Mm-hmm. And that was the first race him and I did together. Yeah. And, uh, man, though, for those first two or three years there, chasing the national points and all that, like, I went racing with him 75% of the races he went yeah. to, probably. And, man, I'm telling you, it was damn two days a week, testing <laughs> somewhere. Like, just, it's nonstop. Yeah. And they raced a lot, too, back then. It's not quite as much as it is then, but we went to 4th of July week back then. There was three 200 lappers. There was uh, Wednesday at Sobo. I want to say uh I want to say Thursday at Caraway yep. and Saturday at Southern National. Yep. Yep. And we won two out of three poles, led like 400 or 560 laps out of, out of 600. That's pretty good. And won all three races. Yeah. yeah. That was a big week. I'm so, with you there. Two things. Man, we lost two people oh, uh, man. last week. That's, um, that's pretty big in, in racing uh, with Freddie Smith and um, Ron Hutter. Ron Hutter, yeah. They, um, the, I mean, one of the all one of the all time greats at dirt racing. Man, like when I was growing up, like Freddie was the guy that you heard about. You know, like mm-hmm. Freddie was the guy. Um, Freddie was the guy, like in that bazooka car. Like yep. he was the guy that that everybody talked about, and like him, it, the, like the stories of him, like at Pennsboro, sparking the right rear quarter panel around the racetrack the whole way. Like that wasn't the normal back then, yeah. right? Like it everybody, was, it was more like back in the day. I thought it was more like an asphalt deal. Like it was, was like straight. It, it was, yeah, because like the cars didn't the car do that crazy, crazy stuff like they do now. Well, they weren't pinned down yeah. with the spoilers. You know, yeah. it was, it was. The, you were driving it. It was straighter. Um, you weren't in the cushion like you are now. Like it was, yeah. like that was like at that point in time when he was doing that. Like that was not normal. Mm-hmm. And it was, I mean, it like the the stories you heard. It was, it was like, it was like legend, right? Yeah. Like you, when you walked in the pits and Freddie Smith was standing there, you were like, like you, like you're starstruck. That's right. You know. Yeah. And and then going to to Ron, I mean, I mean, I saw a tweet from Dale Jr. He he built. Man, the only yeah, I mean, it's that's what a terrible situation. Yeah. Like I I don't. I, the best way to explain Ron Hutter. Is if there's a Mount Rushmore of engine builders, he's the guy in the front with his face sticking yeah, out. Yeah, I mean that's, for sure. that's just about what it is, right? Yep. 
And uh, at one point, I'm pretty sure that he was the first engine builder to win Cup, Bush, and Truck yeah, championships yeah. in the same year. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, what he has done, what they, what they have accomplished, both of them. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it'll be fun. There's a lot of good good information, and there's a lot more we could talk about. So, oh yeah, yeah. But. So there's a lot of other things, but you know, I think. I think this would be good. Uh, start coming up here every couple of months and do a show and might as and, well. And uh, me and you do it well together because I because I, we know each other. We we've been around each other. We can. You well, know. the reality is the same conversation we would have had anyway. Tom just turned the camera on, right? <laughs> but um, so one let me say one thing before we go. We're getting ready to uh, we're working on putting a deal together with JRI to go um, do make a little bit of a push in some dirt stuff. So. We'll do this again in a few months and kind of see where we're at on that, gauge some progress. Sounds good. I'm your dirt guy. I run once, twice a year. Yeah, you and Theo, <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Teddy's a champ. It's like you're going to step up your dirt I game. I know it. I know it. <laughs> so going back to there, one more thing. So, um, and he can edit this out and stuff. But I can promise you, one thing Bob Pollard will do before you was talking about things I want to do, like the modified deal, one thing I do want to do, and you're going to laugh at this one, and you, even if you tell me no, I'm still going to do it anyways. Well, you never didn't do even it when though, I told you no before. <laughs> even though, even though I, I will make a lap in a super late mall at Eldora. Oh, 100%. If that's not on your bucket list, you're not human. I, I just, it's on my bucket list to do. Like, yeah, I, I that's watched not on this your bucket on flow. It's not and, human. Like, something. Badass race car drivers like Jonathan yeah. one there. Like Man. I just want to. I, I may suck, but I just want to go do it one time. That's right. You know what I mean? It's and not something that I expect to go win, but I at least want to go do it to say I done it. And I because I can't get I can't do those things in NASCAR. Like I I don't care about running a cup race. I like I would like to run a truck race one time. Yeah, that'd be cool. because the trucks fascinate me. I like the way they race and stuff like that. But I would like to do that. And Eldor is one of those things for me. So yeah, the truck deal is also it. It's it would be a little bit easier coming in to be competitive Correct. at because of the technology difference yep. at this point. But man, like I think that it just gets, it gets lost in the mix of some of those races, how big they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we talk about the Eldoras and, and whatnot, you want to be a part of those huge, races, right? You want to be a part of them. The biggest, the biggest short track race in the country is the IMCA super nationals at Boone, Iowa. They have mm -hmm. 1100 cars. It takes a friggin' week to run the event. Mm. And like nobody even thinks about it. Yeah. Nobody ever even talks about it, right? Yeah. It's pretty wild, like how That's much crazy. of that stuff's out there. Yeah. But there's Eldora for sure, Knoxville, Iowa too. Yeah. And uh one of my favorite dirt tracks that I think gets overlooked is Deer Creek up in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty pretty wild up there. Yeah, I never uh I never pay much attention to Deer Creek. Yeah, it's check fun. It you have to check it out. But But yeah, we appreciate you ha um uh, you coming on the show. And uh, hopefully we can do this again soon, just to to kind of talk about some some other stuff. And man, if Nasty and Geo get to uh, getting some excitement in the next couple yeah. of weeks, we'll, well, I think uh, they're going to race this weekend. They right? are, they are. Yeah, so, it'll be all right. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right, my man. Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching and listening to uh, this week's episode of BSing with Bubba. Everyone go online, check it out, uh, like, subscribe, comment, share uh, to get us out there, get us get us going. So uh, check out BubbaPollard.com for all the t-shirts and also go and like uh, Sport Action Films um, to get great content and content to come.